So this is our test one review. Um, the, it's, we're going, your test is on sections 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and 1, 6. Not just 1, 3, 1, 4, and 1, 6. So again, um, you will have questions on your test that are similar to what your quiz started with, where you're given a set of numbers for A, a set of numbers for B, a set of numbers of C, and you're asked to find the union of like A and B or the intersection of something like B and C. Okay. Um, we are only doing specific questions from this review that are most similar to the ones that you'll see on your test. The first four that we start with, we're just writing the interval notation for the word form that's given to us, the statement that's given to us. Remember with these, if it is not equal to that number, it gets, that number gets a parenthesis. If it is equal to that number, that number gets a bracket. If you're working with infinity or negative infinity, it's automatically a set of parentheses. For 27, we have that the real numbers that are greater than zero. What's your smallest number that you're going to have there? Zero. What's the largest number you're going to have? Infinity. infinity. We said automatically the infinity. We'll get a parenthesis on it. And then are we including that zero? Is it also equal to? No. no. So the, the parenthesis goes on that also. So what you your parentheses will be used on a number that's not included. It's not equal to. Your brackets will be the ones that are included or equal to. Remember in the past we said the word inclusive is like a dead giveaway that we're going to use brackets because it's equal to that number or it includes that number. For 28, we have the numbers less than 4. If we're working with the numbers less than 4, what's our smallest number that we're going to have? Negative. negative infinity. What's the largest number that we have? Four. The negative infinity automatically gets... The 4 will also get because it's not including the 4. It's not equal to 4. For 29, we have the numbers between 5 and 6. If we're working with the numbers between 5 and 6, the smallest that we see there, five. the largest is? Six. Are they equal to the 5 and the 6? No. no, so they both get parentheses. For 30, we have the numbers between 5 and 6 inclusive. If it's inclusive, it means what? Brackets. Brackets, it includes. So if we're between 5 and 6, that's 5, comma 6. And we got brackets on both. For numbers 35 and 36, we are writing the set of intervals as a single interval. So with these, you want to look at what's the smallest number, what's the largest number. If it's an intersection, they're going to get brackets automatically because it includes the same numbers. If it's a union, you have to make sure that you're paying attention to the numbers you're working with. If it's a negative infinity or a positive infinity, it's going to get parentheses on that infinity or negative infinity. The highest or the lowest number, if it's an actual number instead of infinity, whatever it has on it already, it will keep. So if there's a bracket on it already, it'll keep the bracket. If there's a parentheses on it already, it'll keep the parentheses. For 35, you have 2 comma 4, so the numbers between 2 and 4 with an intersection of 3 comma infinity, so great numbers greater than 3. An intersection are the numbers that are the same between the two sets. So if we look at 2 and 4, that's 2, 3, 4. The numbers between 2 and 4, 2, 3, 4. We'll use that to represent those. Then for 3 to infinity, 3, it goes up greater than, so 4, 5, 6, all the way to infinity. What's the same out of both of these sets? Four. Three, and four. 3 and 4. Good. So the 3 and the 4 are included in both of those, so we're going to have a bracket, 3, comma, 4, close bracket. For 36, we have the numbers less than 3 with a union of the numbers between 1 and 6. If we're working with the numbers less than 3 with a union of the numbers 1 through 6, unions, what's the smallest number? What's the largest number? What's your smallest number here out of these two sets? The smallest number you have is negative infinity. What's the largest number that you have? 
the six. What do we say automatically goes infinity? Negative infinity. Parentheses. What's already on the six? So it's going to stay a parentheses. So it's just going to be from negative infinity to six. The next questions that we're going to be looking at, we're just performing the indicated operation. We're going to look at number 47 next. So we have negative one-fourth plus one-twelfth. What's our rule when we're adding or subtracting fractions? Denominator. Same denominator, common denominator. What is your least common denominator out of these two fractions? 12. If 12 is your least common denominator out of both of these fractions, what are you going to multiply the top and the bottom of the first fraction by? Three. Good. So this is going to give us negative 3 over 12 plus 1 over 12. Our rule when we're adding or subtracting two numbers that have opposite signs, so we're going to look at the number without the signs, keep the sign in front of the larger number, and then subtract the two. So negative 3 plus 1 gives us negative, negative 2, and we keep it over that denominator of 12. Is negative 2 over 12 in simplest form? No. Simplify it. What does it become? No. Negative 1 6. Next, we'll look at number 48. We have 1 third minus negative 1 12. The two negatives next to each other turn into positives. What's your least common denominator? So what do you multiply that one-third by top and bottom? Four. Good. So this is going to become 4 over 12 plus 1 over 12, which gives us what? 5 twelfths. Good. Next, we're going to look at number 57. This is 3.2 divided by negative 0 0.8. You can do this one of two ways. You can turn these decimals into a fraction if you'd rather work with fractions. If you do that, you just have to remember that when you divide fractions, you keep change flip. If you don't want to work with fractions, we can work with the, de the decimals. That negative 0 0.8 is going to go to the, on the outside of our division house. That 3.2 goes on the inside. Can we divide by a decimal? No, you can't. So we're going to move that decimal point to the right once to make it negative 8. And then we do the same thing underneath to make that 32. So negative 8 goes into 32 how many times? Four. Is it a negative 4 or a positive 4? Negative. negative. Good. For our next set of questions, we are just simplifying these expressions. So for 62, which is the next question we're going to look at, we have parentheses 4 plus 7, close parentheses, times 5. Do your order of, or use your order of operations. Do what's inside the parentheses first. The 4 plus 7 gives us 11. So 11 times 5 is 55. 66 will be the next question that we look at. We have 4 plus 7 squared. What's our first operation that we're going to do here? The exponent. So 7 squared is? So 4 plus 49 gives us an answer of 53. Good. For 73, we have 5 plus 3 times the absolute value of 6 minus 4 minus 3. Decide what you do first by looking at the absolute value. If you have operations inside the absolute value, simplify those first, just like it would be in parentheses. So inside the absolute value, you have subtraction, you also have multiplication. What do you do first? Multiplication. So the negative 4 times 3 gives us, so that's 5 plus 3 times the absolute value of 6 minus 1. Or sorry, minus 12. From here, continue to simplify what's inside those absolute value bars. What's 6 minus 12? Negative 6. So 6, or sorry, 5 plus 3 times the absolute value of negative 6. What is the absolute value of negative 6? So 5 plus 3 times 6. Do the multiplication first. 3 times 6 gives us. So 5 plus 18 is. 
23. For 74, we have the absolute value of 3 minus 4 times 2 minus the absolute value of 5 minus 8. Inside the first set of absolute value bars, what operation are you going to do first? Multiplication. So that gives us the absolute value of 3 minus 8 minus the absolute value of 5 minus 8. 3 minus 8 is what? Negative 5. 5 minus 8 is? Negative 3. What is the absolute value of negative 5? What's the absolute value of negative 3? 5 minus 3 is? 2. So the next one we're going to look at is number 79. We have negative 12 plus 2 times 6 all over 4 minus negative 3. A couple things. That 4 minus negative 3 is going to turn into what? Positive. The 2 times 6 up top gives us 12 plus what? 2 times 6 is? 12. The 4 plus 3 on the bottom. That's negative 12 plus 12 up top. What is it going to simplify to? 0 over 7. 0 over 7. The, tw the negative 12 plus 12 is 12 minus 12, so that's 0. Anytime you have 0 on the top of your fraction, what does it simplify to? 0. For 81, we have negative 1 minus negative 6 all over 4 minus negative 4. The two negatives next to each other turn into positives. So negative 1 plus 6 gives us 5. The negative 4 plus 4 gives us 0. Anytime 0 is in the, the bottom of the fraction, what's our answer? Undefined. There is a big difference between 0 being an answer and undefined being an answer. They are not the same thing. So you cannot give me 0 and get credit for an answer that should have been undefined. They're two different things. 0 is an actual solution. Undefined means there is no solution. So again, they are two different things. For the next set of questions that we go over, we're going to use A as negative 2, B as 3, and C as negative 1. For 89, we have C minus B times C plus B. So again, if we plug in these values for C and B, this is going to give us negative 1 minus 3 times negative 1 plus 3. What is negative 1 minus 3? Negative 4. What's 1? Negative 1 plus 3. So 3 minus 1. 2. When we multiply these two, what's our answer? Negative 8. Good. For 91, we have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So again, we're using a as negative 2, b as 3. So this is going to give us negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 times 3 plus 3 squared. What is negative 2 squared? 4. The 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 times 3 gives us negative 12. And 3 squared is? 9. The 4 minus 12 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 9, or 9 minus 8, gives us 1. For number 95, we're given b plus c all over a plus b. We said that b is 3, c is negative 1, a is negative 2. So this is going to give us 3 plus negative 1 all over negative 2 plus 3. 3 minus 1 gives us 2. 3 minus 2 gives us 1. So 2 over 1 is just 2. For 99, we have a plus b in parentheses times c. a, we said is negative 2. b is 3. c is negative 1. So this is going to be negative 2 plus 3 
all multiplied by negative 1. The negative 2 plus 3, we switch it around. 3 minus 2 gives us 1. And 1 times negative 1 gives us what? Negative 1. The remaining questions that we do, we're just simplifying. So for the next one that we're going to look at is 131. We have 3a plus 7 plus 4a minus 5. We're combining like terms here. So your like terms are the 3a and the 4a. That gives us 7a, then the 5 and the negative, or sorry, the 7 and the negative 5, which gives us a positive 2. So we just have 7a plus 2. Next, we're going to look at 138. We have 7 minus 2 times x minus 7 plus 7 minus x. First thing we do here is distribute the negative 2 inside the parentheses. So it's going to give us 7 minus 2x plus 14 plus 7 minus x. You have like terms with the negative 2 and the negative x. So to combine those, you get negative 3x. Next, the 7 plus 14 plus 7 is 28. So that's negative 3x plus 28. Next, we're going to look at number 144. We have 1 half times 2x minus 1 plus 1 fourth times x plus 1. So there's two ways of doing this. The first thing that I'm going to do regardless of the way I want to do it is I'm going to distribute the 1 half as well as the 1 fourth. When I distribute the 1 half, we're going to have 2x over 2 minus 1 half. When I distribute the 1 fourth, we're going to have 1 fourth x or x over 4 plus 1 fourth. You have addition and subtraction going on here. In order to simplify this, you need like denominators. So your least common denominator between all of these is 4, which means the first two fractions within this expression, you have to multiply the top and the bottom of that fraction by 2. So this is going to give us 4x over 4 minus 2 over 4 plus x over 4 plus 1 fourth. Your like terms here are the 4x over 4 and the x over 4. So that x over 4 is like saying 1x over 4. So we're going to add those. That gives us 5x over 4. Next, you have the negative 2 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is negative 1 fourth. So this is your answer. You can have it like this. Or if you wanted to multiply in that 1 half, and you can realize that the 2x divided by 2 is just x. You'd have x minus 1 half plus 1 fourth x plus 1 fourth. Your x's are like numbers, so you can combine those. That gives you 1x plus 1 fourth x. That's 1 and 1 fourth x. Then you have the 1 half and the 1 fourth. Multiply top and bottom by 2. That's 2 fourths or negative 2 fourths. So that's negative one-fourth. So just a little bit easier or simple or quicker, but same answer. Number 145 will be the last one that we look at for today. We have negative 9x squared minus 6x plus 3 all over 3. If you realize that all three of those terms up top on that fraction are divisible by 3, you can just divide each of those terms by 3 and be done. If you don't, there's nothing wrong with that. You can separate this to be negative 9x squared over 3 minus 6 over 3, or sorry, 6x over 3 plus 3 over 3. The negative 9 divided by 3 turns the 3 into a 1, the negative 9 into a negative 3. So that's negative 3x squared. The negative 6 divided by 3, the 3 becomes 1, the negative 6 becomes a negative 2, so that's negative 2x. The 3 over 3 becomes 1 over 1, or just 1. So your answer for this one is just the negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. You could have done the same exact thing like I was saying. If you realize that all three of those terms up top on that fraction are divisible by that 3, that 3 would become a 1, the negative 9 becomes a negative 3, negative 6 becomes negative 2, and 3 becomes 1. So again, it would give you the same answer.